I don't know. I mean, the um, the thought of trying to win a game is kind of mind-boggling at times. You know, you 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 attack to the end, right? And so I think that uh, our kids have put in a lot of work. It's showing on the field. We got to put blinders on and just keep getting one week better, you know? Very proud of where they're at right now, but we all know how that can change, too, if you let distractions seep in. There's been a lot of talk about <coughs> Uh, the running game, which had more success this past Thursday. What about Chris Johnson, who got his debut and scored a touchdown? What have you seen from him? Yeah, I mean, very dynamic player, right? Just young, trying to figure everything out. You know, for running backs, it's not just about running the ball. I think we understand that. I mean, protections are very complicated, especially when fronts change and all the rest. So getting a grasp on everything as a young running back is, is harder than people probably think. And so, um, but his skill set is obviously there. You can see that on that play, right? And so, well, he's going to grow in the future, and we're excited about, you know, him learning everything and getting comfortable with, with playing football here. What can you say about Xavier Restrepo and his approach and his production? It seems like he's a spark plug in general for the offense, too. Yeah, I mean, very consistent from day one. You know, since spring ball, all through camp, you know, he, he's been the same guy every day. And he's his understanding in football IQ is very high. Um, you know, his ability to get open underneath is obviously something that's very important in our offense. But he's made some plays down the field, too. And I think that, you know, if you look at, at all the games that we've played this year, whenever it became a time to, to somebody needed to step up and make a play, it's typically been him. You know, in the A&M game, for sure, I mean, you know, you go three and out back-to-back -back times, and then <clears throat> you need something to happen, and he has a 60-yard play. It kind of, you know, ignited us to, to start relaxing and playing football. And then he had, a you know, one of the same games Saturday. I mean, he played a half of football in what, called six for one or something. I mean, yeah, very steady player. Shannon, it seems, uh, it seems like this year's group of receivers have been done really well so far at uh, getting yards after the catch. Um, is that something you guys – worked on it would be being more physical or is that just kind of like opportunistic you know things yeah I mean we we stress the point of getting up the field you know I mean there's there's certain things that are in everybody's offense that's unique to that offense I think something that's been unique to our offense you know from my lifetime has been you know there's certain drills we do and certain things that we stress of when the ball is coming to you and hits your hands and um, a lot of people, you know, stress certain things. And we stress getting vertical, like getting up the field, drop step, get vertical. And it's all one movement, and it's all um, – it's stressed hard. Ball security is stressed hard. But, you know, the, the yards after catch, I think the A&M game was like 240-something. And um, – but to me, they have to have a clear understanding of what to do with the ball when, when it hits your hands immediately. And I think that a lot of people kind of lose sight of that, you know, and, and we stress it hard, we, we drill it, and I think it's a product on the field of what we stress and drill daily. What did you like about what Emory did in his time? Efficient, you know, the, the, ga the whole game was fairly efficient offensively. We had nine drives, we scored seven touchdowns. Uh, the, two the two drives that didn't end in touchdowns, we fumbled and then we had one that you know, it was, what was it, third and one, and then we took a false start and didn't get the, um, the third down. But for the most part, what I thought, what I wanted, I should say, very efficient. Uh, Emory came in there, I think it was nine of 11, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, put the ball in play, and he had a couple that I thought, you know, when he, when he scrambled to the right and he kind of put the ball in jeopardy that one time, that was probably his negative play of the game. Other than that, he's very efficient and very accurate. Where is he in relation to true freshman quarterbacks that you've seen or work with? Uh, it, it seems like he's a little further along at this stage. Yeah, he has a he has a good skill set and a good grasp of the offense. You know, I mean, he's his timing of um, 
of route, you know, his his accuracy and timing is pretty good for a young guy. He and, uh, he and Riley Williams uh, nearly connected on a big play. What, yeah. have you seen, what have you seen from Riley who's been getting a good amount of playing time? Yeah, I mean, you're going to see that more and more with him. I mean, I, I think Riley's ability to run routes and get open is as good as a tight end as I've seen. And so as time goes, he started the year, you know, he wasn't playing. He had little – some things, but um, now he's – 100% and he's going, you'll see him make more and more plays in the past game as time goes. I mean, his his body control and his ability to get open is, is unique. And I'm very excited about, you know, watching him progress. What stands out about Temple's defense? Very athletic. We played them last year. Um, and I think they're a much improved defense from last year. Uh, we had to score at the end to beat them. Um, and I thought, you know, this year watching them on tape, you know, they're, they're more athletic. They get after the passer. I mean, they, I think they were top 10 last year in sacks, number 11 in tackles for loss. So chaotic up front, a lot of movement, you know, a lot of um, subtle D-line movements, twists and stuff like that that gives you issues. Uh, and they're explosive on the edge. I mean, they can get off the ball, time up snaps and do the rest. And so they're much more aggressive in the back end than, than what we played Saturday. You know, they're going to challenge us and get in our face a little bit. So, you know, we know we know what's out there. Um, you know, they're a very well-coached defense, very well-coached. If I remember right, a few weeks ago you mentioned having, like, uh, four games to play with with Emory and Jakari. Uh, obviously, Jakari hasn't gotten in yet. Mm -hmm. um, how do you anticipate, you know, utilizing him for those four games? Are you trying to, like, maybe use him in games that meet with higher stakes against, you know, ACC opponents? Like, how do you – I don't know yet. I mean, I'm, I'm playing that by ear. I'm delaying it as long as I can, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, you know, we're sitting here in situations that well, we, we prepare weekly and, and both of them are prepared to play, you know. And so, you know, I go into games knowing that, you know, I have two guys to play and I don't want to play more than four with him. And so it would be very careless of me uh, to play him in games where, I didn't need him or I didn't deem it to be a game that, you know. And Emory's playing at a high level. And so, you know, we're, we're in a good place as far as getting our goal accomplished with him. Now, it's a long season. And so, you know, we're in week four. So, so, so far, so good, right? How is uh, Jakar's um, attitude? It's great. No, it's unbelievable. He's doing, look. I told him at the beginning of this year, I mean, I redshirted as a junior, you know, so I've been through it as a player, although a long time ago. And, uh, and I've had, you know, through my career, we've, we've redshirted guys later in their career, probably more than most. So I know, uh, I know the challenges that come with it. Uh, and I told him from the beginning that, you know, it's gonna be a year that you gotta battle boredom, you know, because you're not gonna be doing a lot you got to be dialed in mentally. You got to be ready to go if needed, and so it's a it's a very challenging year for him. But the kid has been unbelievable. His attitude's off the chart. He's done everything he, we need to help us get ready for games, and if he if we need him, he is there. And um, very proud of him and the way he's handled everything. <clears throat> what does he do well? That you see out there? Excuse me. What does he do well? Well, I mean, he's got a dominant trait. You know, I mean, he's one of the fastest kids on the team. I think everybody sees that. You know, what he's done good since I've been here is he's developed the pocket stuff that we've been working on. You know, work on with every quarterback, not just him. You know, Tyler's the same way. We have certain, we have certain beliefs in our offensive system that, um, that playing quarterback from the pocket and making them defend the whole field is number one. And utilizing your natural skill set will become organic, right? And that, that'll happen, although there will be some scheme plays that, that exist. And so um, just sharpening those tools for him, and he's made, I mean, leaps and bounds progress from the beginning of spring till now. You know, he's not sitting here like in the spring. It was easy because he's taken, a, you know, he's taken a lot of reps. Now, you know, reps are divided because we got to get Tyler ready to start. You know, so he takes the majority of the reps, and then the backup reps are divided between him and Emory. So you're not taking the amount of reps that you took in the spring. So the progress, you know, 
it's hard, you know, I mean, it might slow down a little bit because of the amount of reps you're taking, but we're doing other things and drills and, and, and things to, to keep up with it. And so is his progress will keep going. Is that red shirt still on the table for Emory? Is it what now? Red shirt is still on the table for Emory as well. It is until he plays five games. That's the rule, you know. And so um, until, until you play five, it's on the table. And so, you know, I don't know how that'll go. We'll see, you know. Yeah. Appreciate it.